The idea is that health and movement professionals should primarily be guides. They can use various tools and practices to assist someone on their journey towards more foot and movement freedom. So an orthotic is a tool, footwear is a tool, manual therapy is a tool. We believe exercise and movement should be a primary tool. Education should be a primary tool. A guide is guiding someone towards more self-efficacy, more confidence, more empowerment versus the disempowered dependence that is the norm these days so people are in pain and all they get is things done to them rather than guidance on how to do things themselves. Primarily they should be leading by example as in they've been exploring their own foot and movement health a lot to the point that they can speak and guide from a place of experience. We want to create leaders in foot health and balance who not only understand the concepts but actually apply them in their own life. It's really being an authority and an expert from a place of experience on how to restore and explore natural foot function and how to develop better balance, showing that it's possible basically to your community and then knowing how to guide them along the process. Welcome to the Restore to Explore podcast from your soulmates at The Foot Collective. We're on a mission to empower humans to restore their natural health and function from the ground up so we can all explore movement and life with freedom and confidence. This week's episode is brought to you by the TFC Soulmate, your ultimate all-in-one restoration and exploration tool. Made from cork, TFC Soulmates are an eco-friendly, lightweight and durable mobility, balance and foot training tool that can be used as a massage roller, foot roller, balance beam, a slant board and even includes two toe resistance bands. The Soulmate is the perfect companion to mobilize your toes, feet and ankles, strengthen your lower body, improve balance, posture and alignment, and prevent and rehab common foot and ankle conditions like plantar fasciitis, bunions, ankle sprains, Achilles tendonitis, and so much more. Every TFC Soulmate comes with access to an in-depth training manual with guided routines from TFC health professionals to make improving foot function and balance fun and accessible for all ages and abilities. For 10% off your soulmate, head to thefootcollective.com and use the code R2E. That's R, the number two, E at checkout. You'll find the details in the show notes. All right, so this episode is a bit of a special one. It's gonna be all about this new TFC guide concept that we've been sitting on for a while and building in the background. It's been quite a, a big job um, in a lot of ways, but it is essentially the last piece of the puzzle that we feel completes pretty much the full picture of TFC's mission and service to the world. So yeah, we're very excited to chat all about it today, go through all the details that we've got mapped out, but I guess first it'd be good just to do a bit of a review, um, a bit of background about TFC's mission and service so that you know, you have a better idea about how God fits in basically. So um, we, throughout the years we've had, we've been talked about a few different types of missions and we've also done a whole podcast on our values, T, uh, TFC's values, which are TFC, Truth, Fun, Community. So if you haven't already listened to that, that is a good one to listen to either before this episode or straight after. Um, but, you know, in terms of the mission statements or like things that we want to do as a company here at TFC, uh, they do kind of fall under those categories of truth fund communities. So the, one of the biggest ones we want, or like the, I guess, first and foremost, it is shifting the culture and the story uh, around feet and footwear. So that kind of comes under this truth angle, like what is really the truth about feet and what do, what do they need? And, you know, is, is the story that we're told in modern society actually true? Or is there a better story? Is there a more accurate story? And it's not that there's one truth, but mm. harnessing the, yeah, the power of the collective to, to really get to the core of what that truth is. Yeah, exactly. So everyone's own individual truth around their feet is, um, you know, it is unique, but in terms of like a societal view, that's the big thing that we want to shift because we tend to be told that feet are, you know, weak, fragile, they need support. They, you know, 
either explicitly or implicitly, it's like they should be hidden away and not seen. Um, you know, if you go into shops barefoot or, um, you know, you probably won't get into some like uh, facilities or places barefoot uh, under various, you know, guises of health and safety and so on. But there is that sort of stigma around feet um, that they should be hidden away, not seen. And then obviously there's the sort of fashionable influences of they should be squished. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they should be squished and healed and um, all of these leftover things that are a result of you know status and fashion from the old days have kind of bled into our modern culture as well so that's why you see dress shoes high heels etc so it's a pretty n overall negative <laughs> outlook on feet and footwear and uh, yeah and footwear um and it's you know in terms of what we know about the body what we know about our evolution, what we know about childhood development, uh, and just you know fundamental principles of physiology, biomechanics, the approach or the current story around footwear just doesn't really hold water. Doesn't actually make sense, um, and it is clearly causing an issue. And that cultural shift, I think, a good barometer for that, or, or a way to think about that, is that when you, in the future, we hope, talk to someone about the shoes they're wearing or about the function of their feet, that there's a shared understanding that like any other part of the body, they need to be functioning naturally and that can be restored. Mm. Um, I'm not expecting in the blink of an eye for everyone to start wearing barefoot shoes. Uh, and for that, that cultural needle, I think will take longer to, to switch. But the understanding around what you are putting on your feet and what you are doing with your feet, I think, we have the potential to really change. I, I think there's still going to be a, a big pull, push, sort of tug of war between fashion and, and, and the function. Like, don't get me wrong. I mm. think that's going to take longer to shift. But I think what we're trying to get people to, to understand and to be educated around is the simple facts around what you should be doing with your feet, what's good for them, what's bad for them. Allow people to make decisions on their own around that, but not have false beliefs around mm. the decisions they're making, or be ill-informed and be missing missing education that can, yeah, can help them make the right decisions for themselves and for their kids, um, and and make choices then around function and fashion based on the situation. Yeah, yeah, making truly informed choices. Um, but really the main point being there is that our feet are adaptable. They can be very resilient. They're actually trainable and, and the inputs that we give them will make, will probably have the biggest effect on their capacity and the way they feel and all of these things that um, we all care about. A lot of it has been sort of blamed on genetics or you know foot type and all of these things. Um, but really, and those things do play a role, of course, but at the end of the day, the way we use our feet is generally going to be the biggest determining factor in terms of how they perform and how they feel, um, which is really, that, that's the biggest thing that we want to shift is make sure people are aware of that. That, that truth around, uh, I guess, the anatomy and, and how the feet work, but then also the truth around if there is pain or dysfunction, who holds the power to get you out of that dysfunction? I think mm. there's a truth that needs to be aligned there as well uh, around not, you know, shifting the mood around reliance on, you know, and these are things we've talked about very often, but the reliance on technology, the reliance on devices to help support your shoe, and then the reliance on experts to hold your hand and make you better um, through that process, mm. as opposed to what we're, we're trying to show people is, Education is the power and we're giving that to you so that you have the, yeah, the keys to take control of your own journey or be guided by people who are willing to support you on that. Yeah, and it's the, the education that can help change your beliefs and your beliefs will change your behavior. And so this kind of bleeds into or runs into the next um, value which forms one of our, you know, one of our missions like a part of our mission, which is to empower people with the skills and tools that make foot training engaging and effective 
but also allow them to engage in other activities that they enjoy. So that comes under the value of fun. So we, we, we want to make foot health fun. We want, we, most people are probably have been, if they have had some kind of foot pain, um, they've been given some kind of exercise or, you know, a few different exercises for their feet. But I'd say most people would agree that none of them were very fun. There's, you know, might be towel scrunches, very classic, um, calf, raises. calf raises, you know, a lot of stuff that can be really good in, in the right context, but isn't necessarily sustainable and isn't something that you want to keep doing once your pain is gone. And, and that is a big issue. It is, especially in the sort of preventative space. So whether you're preventing an injury from recurring or preventing a, you know, a pain condition that you had from recurring or you've you know never had a pain or an injury there and you just want to have healthy thriving feet those boring repetitive exercises are probably for the vast majority of people they're not going to get done um, in the absence of pain as a motivating factor and so we don't just want to help people restore foot function and get out of pain we actually want to prevent it you know prevent it coming back, but also prevent it intergeneration, intergenerationally um, mm. by, again, as you say, educating parents so that they can make informed decisions for themselves and for their kids, but also getting kids playing with movements that actually are fun and that they want to do because they're fun, but will keep their feet in really good condition. Um, to allow them to keep doing to, all the other yeah. things they love doing. Exactly. And yeah, exactly. And for anyone who is restoring their foot function, it's not just about getting out of pain. It's about then going and exploring other activities that give you more, you know, enjoyment and meaning and purpose and connection. And in a dream world, the parents and the children that they're helping on this journey playing together and, and having that capacity mm, exactly. to, to work on it together. Uh, it not having to be a solitary sort of endeavor by one or the other, but it being able to be fun for all. Yeah, and the fact is that we do pretty much everything on our two feet. It's just getting around day to day, going to the gym, playing sports. Um, pretty much everything is on our two feet, and there's a lot of fun that can be had with movement. But if it's all done on like a shaky foundation, then it's very hard to be sustainable. So having fun with your sort of rehab and prehab is one thing, very important, um, but that also unlocks more fun in general in your life. Um, and the best, we feel obviously the best way to have fun is with other people. Um, things can be heaps of fun by yourselves, but generally that presence of connection, and this is something we talk about in that um, original podcast about values, is true fun is... A combination of playfulness, flow, and connection. And the connection piece is where you know you're laughing with each other, you're smiling and laughing, you are maybe competing or collaborating, you are doing something together, and that is, I think, especially important when it comes to something that is perceived as weird, like yeah. training your feet yeah. or even training your balance is not really that common. And so if you're the only one in your friendship group or family group doing it, then it can feel a bit lonely and you're a bit like, oh, should I even be doing this? Um, it's a bit weird. And having a community of people around you who are also into that and are, or on the same journey, they're wanting to get out of pain or prevent pain or injury, um, and that can support you is really, really key. So that is the sort of next part of our mission, which is creating a global collective of like-minded people who can support and inspire each other on their journey towards more foot and movement freedom. And that obviously is the value of community. Um, so those three areas basically form our entire mission, our ethos. It's shifting the culture with truth, um, empowering people with skills and tools that make their training fun and creating a go global collective or global community of like-minded people supporting and inspiring each other. And with that, we can really move the needle on this foot health um, or like foot, yeah, foot health 
or foot dysfunction epidemic, I suppose. And the balance, um, this epidemic of falls and sports injuries, a lot of which is down to people just not training their balance <laughs> and, and their overall lower limb function. Um, so we, as, as a company and as a business, we can provide a few different things to help make this happen. Obviously a big one is online education and training. So we've been in this, in that space for a long time. Like we obviously sell tools, which is another part of our service. The beams being the original. And then we, we created beam training systems because a beam by itself is just a piece of wood basically, or a piece of aluminium. Um, and you can just get on there and try and stand on it. But if you have some constraints or some, um, stances to play with various ways to use it, it only takes a few little bits, but if you can be trained on how to start and how to progress, then the piece of aluminium or beam suddenly becomes this really amazing, useful tool that allows your body to express all these amazing, um, abilities and same thing goes for the soulmate the soulmate was our physical tool that was the sort of bridge between flat ground and a beam a beam is very difficult very challenging on the feet and balance the soulmate is like almost halfway there but even more accessible because you can change the stance um, setups to which means you know anyone could go on there as long as they can stand up they can go on there which is very different to a beam um, and so the Soulmate, while it is an amazing tool uh, and we get heaps of good feedback in it from our customers and we love it, we use it literally all, every day. Um, the, what we've sort of been talking about and realizing a lot lately is it really is more about the training when it comes to the, the, the software. So you could think of the Soulmate as the hardware and the training system as the software and you could pretty much use any hard, any hardware that mimics the soulmate, doesn't actually have to be the soulmate and you could get the benefit from the software. And this is sort of why we're moving more towards thinking about soulmate training rather than just soulmate the product. Um, and soulmate training basically integrates all the most important aspects of foot function with the rest of the lower limb health, strength, mobility, coordination and balance um, and obviously integrates that with various tasks um, as well. So that would be like the play-based way of doing things where you're actually engaged in a task with some rules and constraints that gives you this extra cognitive um, challenge but also makes the balance harder as well. So. We could probably do a whole episode about soulmate training, which we, I sh I'm sure we probably will as we, as we talk more about this concept. Um, but those two, the online training and the physical tools go really hand in hand, obviously. And then the last sort of product or service that we provide is in-person experiences. So for, the, for a few years, we've been doing our in-person workshops and play shops on the weekend. Um, which we've had so many people along to. We've been doing them around Australia and in the US and we, and even before us doing that, Nick was running in-person events, workshops and seminars all across the world. And, you know, we, we get so much out of, we, we get so much out of traveling and doing those events and the people we talk to who come to the events get a lot out of them. And we realize that there really should be a, a regular outlet for this kind of training because it is quite unique. Um, there should be a regular person, uh, regular outlet. And we do get a lot of people asking at the play shops, do you guys do regular classes in whatever city we're in? And we're like, oh, sorry, we're in Brisbane um, and we don't do regular classes. But now we can say we do do regular classes in Brisbane and um, these are called soulmate sessions and they are an exploration of the whole soulmate training ethos, basically. And just to underline there, like Jim has said, when we say soulmate training, that isn't just using the tool. Mm. It's an exploration of yeah, lower limb function. And it's almost like, it's, it's almost like training for a sport. The, the play on the tool is kind of the, the end evolution of, of mm. that training and the, and the way you can play that game. That's true. But all of the work that you're doing 
through the soulmate sessions and through the soulmate training is preparing you so that you're able to play to explore Mm -hmm. that restore to explore journey is what the soulmate training takes people on yeah exactly yeah and it it's the whole point of soulmate training is it's very accessible like i said it could be um you know someone with very poor balance but they can stand up um or you know an elite athlete with probably quite good balance relatively um but still lot to improve and that's something we've found with the athletes that we've worked with is that while you know they are a high level mover in a lot of ways they may actually be missing some key fundamental aspects especially when it comes to their feet simply because they've been (laughs) squished in probably boots or some kind of sport specific footwear for a long time yeah and never actually trained directly and so soulmate training can be for um you know, pain and dysfunction or for performance and can take you from one spectrum, from one end of the spectrum to the other. Um, and then soulmate sessions are a way for you to do that with other people. Yeah, in uh, person. And, and brings back that community aspect of our, of our values of just, yeah, wanting people to do this together. Yeah. So soulmate sessions is kind of, uh, us running these sessions has been an amazing process of, figuring out, well, how do you structure a 45 minute class around this? And how do you have enough sort of restore and enough explore so that it is, you know, something that can be progressed, but is also a little bit fun and engaging. So it's been a whole, a whole journey of figuring that out. And I'm sure we're still going to be figuring more and more things out as we go, but we've landed on a, a structure that we really feel is right. And we've had a lot of feedback from the people who've come that uh, they love the structure. Um, and it's something that we're very excited to build here at our Brisbane HQ and also then take to other cities, other countries, especially as this guide program rolls out. So that is the sort of products, I suppose, and the services, the services, yeah, services and products. We also, within online education and training, then we do have our Explorer membership, our community. So this is also important because this is where this concept of the guide comes in. So we've got explorers who are people on a journey to unlocking or creating more foot freedom in their lives as a foundation for more movement freedom in general. Um, These can be everyday people. Yeah people who have been in pain for decades or people who just want to move better or people who just want to have fun with others and and connect over the shared, you know, belief in the importance of the feet. We sort of get people from everywhere um, who who join that looking for, yeah, for different, different aspects. Yeah. We wanted to take a quick break from the episode to let you know about our ultimate free foot health resource. If you're listening, you've probably already started the journey towards improving your foot and movement health but if you're still wearing conventional shoes most of the time, that's anything cushioned, heeled, narrow or rigid, it's kind of like taking one step forward and two steps back. Knowing what shoe is right for you though can be super confusing. That's why we made the Guide to Foot Freedom. We've taken everything our team of foot health experts have learned over the years and synthesized it into one handy manual, packed with all you need to know about unleashing the natural power of your foundation. You'll learn how to understand your feet, the truth about modern footwear, the five F's for finding natural footwear, plus a step-by-step guide with training videos to help you assess your foot function and improve it so you can safely and seamlessly transition into shoes that will finally give your feet freedom. The best part is, like I said, it's absolutely free. Just head to thefootcollective.com and click learn to find the free ebook, The Guide to Foot Freedom. You'll find the link in the show notes. Now back to the episode. In there, we've got various programs, um, some structured programs that can go either very in depth or can be, you know, quite introductory. We've got different challenges. We do live calls, live community calls to answer questions. We've got an area that you can type in a question about your condition and we've got TFC pros in there that can help guide you on that well, sort of yeah. support you yeah. support you through the process of well what do i do next um sometimes it's it's not easy to just 
solve all your questions with a written text, but it's like, here's some areas that you might want to look into, or you should definitely go and see someone to review this. You know, there's, there's times where just a little bit of advice can put you on the right path. And in the past, those people would reach out to us directly through email or Instagram and Jim would either have to triage himself or mm. direct them to a handful of practitioners that we trusted and there wasn't that many that we could call on and not in every corner of the world. And so we created the community for the explorers to connect with each other, but then also the online community for them to connect with pros. Yes, exactly. And so pros are... Uh, health and movement practitioners that essentially align with us on our core principles, our core philosophies, and have said that they, or have essentially ticked that they agree with our tenets of being a pro. Um, and we've done a whole podcast on this, but basically it means that we can have a community of practitioners that we know are aligned with our approach, which really just comes down to an empowering approach, an active and empowering approach to rehabilitation. Um, and everyone is going to have different experiences, different scopes of practices, you know, different expertise. But at the core, if their, if their desire or their aim is to empower people and get them more active, then however they do that is kind of up to them. So we've really been loving have this, having this pro community and it's been we, great. Yeah. we have round tables a couple of times a month where we talk about certain conditions and we bring up any points of disagreement so we can flesh it out. We bring up, you know, people can ask questions, pros can ask questions of each other so that we can all learn from this collective wisdom basically that everyone or each pro brings individually and we can all become better as practitioners. The one thing that we haven't had with pros is a, I guess, a, a confirmation that they are actively working on their own foot health, foot and movement health, um, or like they, they don't necessarily have to show a proof of work that they have been engaging in soulmate training or foot or balance training and they haven't passed, I guess, a test or, of like knowledge. So these are people that align with us, but they're not necessarily certified by us or in our approach, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so this is where, this is always where we've been building to is having a certification so that we can basically give our entire approach to foot health and balance training, which will essentially come under the umbrella of soulmate training, um, to a practitioner so that they can learn and apply it to their own clients and might be, you know, to their own members of their facility or studio. Um, but basically the idea is that health and movement professionals should primarily be guides and they can use various tools and practices to assist someone on their journey towards more foot and movement freedom. So an orthotic is a tool, footwear is a tool, um, manual therapy is a tool, like wh whatever you use um, is fine. Obviously we believe exercise and movement should be a primary tool. Education should be a primary tool in the, in the um, toolbox of health and movement professionals, but Primarily, they should be leading by example, as in they've been exploring their own foot and movement health a lot to the point that they can speak and guide from a place of experience. And that's, that's kind of where we landed on the name for guides. It obviously also fits into this metaphor of explorers climbing the mountain of foot freedom as base camp to getting to more, towards more movement freedom. And guides can sort of help them from the bottom of the mountain towards the top of the mountain, if that makes sense. Um, so a guide is guiding someone towards more self-efficacy, more confidence, more empowerment versus 
the disempowered dependence that is the norm these days. So people are in pain and all they get is things done to them rather than guidance on how to do things themselves. So, you know, it's, it's definitely, and this is where it kind of gets interesting because, you know, we're, we're all about people not being dependent, but it's not the same as being purely independent. Like you really shouldn't have to do all these things by yourself, which comes back to what we were talking about before with community. That feeling of being supported and inspired is actually really important and you're only really going to get that from other people. So if, you know, you don't want to just be this complete island of independence and you do everything yourself, um, but you also don't want to be fully dependent on someone else to do things to you in order to sort of feel better. Yeah. And that's what we've seen from feedback within the community is that it is a lot easier when people feel like they are supported on that journey. Our explorers have experienced that by having our core team in there supporting them and having other you know explorers supporting them on their journey. And some people, yes, will learn that way and, and be solitary, but for the most part, you know, there's a reason that run clubs have become so popular, you know, movement uh, sort of training facilities like F45 mm. and, and that all took off because it was it's embedded in community and, and wanting mm. to do that with other people and having the, yeah, that almost that re- feeling of responsibility to turn up for yeah. other people, uh, not just for yourself. Yeah, the, yeah, the support. And I think the inspiration is also pretty key mm. where... It kind of comes into the fun concept as well, but it's like if you see someone doing something that you go, oh, that looks fun, that looks like something I would want to be able to do, then, and then you see or you realize that there's a pathway to get there and there's guidance on exactly how to get there, then it's, it's just more exciting. You're more likely to go and do it because it's really, really inspiring. Like if, if I see someone doing a, a really heavy shoulder press, I'm like, oh, that's, that's cool, that looks hard. But if I see someone doing a really cool handstand trick or a cartwheel or something, then that is more inspiring to me. And I go, oh, actually, oh, that's right, I wanna learn how to cartwheel, which um, I have been doing lately. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that, it's that concept. So if, <clears throat> while any exercise can be enjoyable and meaningful, if you can find things that inspire you and people who are inspiring and then able to guide you, then it's like a, it's just a perfect system to get you towards making those behaviors a daily habit, basically. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah, that is basically where the guide fits in. This is the next iteration of footnote training which was developed by Nick and then Ruth came on as well and that itself went through many iterations uh, of very lots of different structures but the idea is the core idea is still the same and that is that we want to create leaders in foot health and balance who not only understand the concepts but actually apply them in their own life Um, and it's not trying to teach people how to be a physio or how to be a podiatrist or to treat specific yeah, injuries. It's, it's yeah, not to, it's not to help people necessarily diagnose or treat specific conditions. It's really being an expert, you know, an authority and an expert from a place of experience on how to develop or how to restore and explore natural foot function, natural foot function and how to develop better balance and showing that it's possible basically to your community and then help knowing how to guide them along the process. And that is a core pillar of, I think, what is going to make guide training different to foot nerd training in that we don't want to just give people the tools and the training and the education to do this and then set them out to the world with no clear roadmap of mm. how that can look as an, as an integrated part of your existing business or potentially to start a business afresh and, you know, focused around delivering that training to your community. Yeah. And being part of a network. So, you know, Mm. while we're not 
training anyone, we're not giving anyone an extra scope of practice where a PT is now suddenly a podiatrist who's, you know, saying, come to me for your foot pain and I'll fix it kind of thing. It's more coming into a global network of people who do have various scopes of practices, which means a PT can have the confidence to at least look at someone's feet, see how they're functioning, understand their history and say, I think you should have an assessment with this podiatrist who I know is also a TFC pro or guide who thinks this way. Because I think this is where there's a, a people can run into roadblocks because you know, you might be someone who's very passionate about foot health and tells, you know, your circle, your community or your clients, oh, this is really important to focus on. But then that client goes to a podiatrist who tells them that it's not or that it's impossible to train the feet or that they just have to wear, you know, shoes and orthotics all the time and not even do any barefoot training or, or whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of context that goes into that. But the point is we want to have a community of people that are on the same wavelength and speaking the same language and so that you can draw on each other's scope of practice because then someone like Andy who is a podiatrist who helps people with an empowering and active approach he could then go oh there's a TFC guide who's a personal trainer down the road you know now that you've done your rehab with me I think it's a great idea to go and do some ongoing training with this guide to help you continue to develop uh, continue to develop which is really the key to, or continue to explore, <laughs> which is the key to getting out of this constant restorative phase. Um, and that's really what has been missing up to this point. Yeah. It's that, that conduit, that connector between those services and those people. Because I think it's, it, it can happen naturally just through the networks that are built on social media, mm. but it is really disconnected and... And it's hard to know that if there is someone in the same suburb as you who is doing this thing because chances are that you cross paths are pretty rare. So yeah. putting those people on, all in a container and helping them identify on a directory like we've got online, of, well, there's a pro there and there's a pro there. And eventually on that same direct directory, people will be able to see, well, there's a guide there that I can go and get in-person training like this from. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's... I think it's important to see the bigger picture there. So, yeah. you know, we basically want our growing, our community is growing, the Foot Collective community is growing pretty rapidly. And obviously, you know, we are expanding into different areas with our products as well. And so there's a lot of interest in this approach and really, frankly, not enough practitioners to uh, essentially supply or to um, serve that interest or serve that community and um, I think people get a bit caught up in like well I'm not a podiatrist so therefore I shouldn't be you know doing anything with feet and it's like well we want to give you the confidence to do something with feet and also the confidence to know when you are out of your depth out of your scope but the network to then lean on and to give that client a really clear pathway on what they should do. Because it might, it might be that you as a sort of a PT or a Pilates um, practitioner or a yoga teacher sends your client to a podiatrist for a review. They have a couple of sessions there and they say, yep, you're all good to keep training basically. And so then it's just a much better service for all involved. You're not questioning about whether you're missing something because of, you know, or whether you're working outside of your scope of practice and then the client feels um, very well looked after and they, they don't feel like they're sort of doing something against their orders of their physio or podiatrist. And on the flip side, like the beautiful thing for those guides will be that the people that are coming to them, we've done a little bit of the hard work or sometimes a lot of the hard work for these, these guides because if they're coming to them from our community or they've been on our website, there's a pretty high chance that they've already started that journey of understanding and they've consumed some of the education that we've put out. So yeah, less friction and I guess more confidence in the alignment between how you are going to approach and, and what the client who's coming to you is going to be expecting. Yeah. And then as well, like we're, 
on the flip side of what I was saying as well, if you are a physio or a podiatrist who has the scope of practice and you do guide training, it means you become a leader mm. in foot health and balance training. You understand more about how to apply this approach to your clients and you have the scope of practice to diagnose and treat um, specific conditions. So it's just a, it's a win-win for everyone basically. Um, but the biggest thing there being we need people who lead by example. Yeah. Um, because you can really only guide someone as far as you've gone yourself. That's, yeah. that's our belief. And we know they're out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, we're launching this with a lot of confidence that there are people who are really going to grab this with both hands. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that through the play shops that we've done around the world is that people are asking for this. They, they, yeah. want, to, they want to find a way to integrate it and it's, it doesn't have to be hard, um, but it has to be from a place of experience, like you said, and hence how the, how the guide training is going to work. Yeah, so we deliberated on this quite a lot. We've had lots of different conversations and foot nerd training was always an online um, course, which makes sense because it's, it is more scalable. You can reach people in uh, deeper um, regions of the world, but we have been talking a lot about the importance of in-person experiences and have experienced that ourselves running these events and we really feel that nothing can replace the in-person the the in-person experience it is just something special and our hope our aim our goal with this is that guides are helping other people in person primarily and you know, to, to learn how to help other people in person without ever attending an in-person event um, could be quite hard. So it will be a two-day certification over the weekend, which will essentially be an in-depth experience of what we refer to as the five keys to foot freedom, mindset, feet, balance, squat, and ground. Um, so that'll be a, an exploration of the theoretical concepts, the practical application of those concepts, and then obviously infused with a lot of play-based exploration. So not just rote learning things, um, but actually learning through playfully exploring, which is actually the way that we learn best <laughs> from an from a, um, evolutionary point of view. Um, so there will be an exam that you have to pass in terms of theoretical understanding as well as practical proficiency. Um, you will become certified once you pass the exam. You can't, you'll have the opportunity to do that on the day. Um, and then once you do become certified, uh, once you do the, the two day certification, then you'll have access to our TFC Pro membership, which gives you, which lists you on the directory, gives you specific wholesale discounts, gives you access to our Pro Circle, our Pro Roundtables, etc. cetera. Um, Anything I'm missing there? With and affiliate pro? commissions too. Oh, yeah. And I think that's sort of a core part of this, this training and, and why we're giving guides access to the pro membership as part of that. It's because th that is the way to make a, a business out of this. We want to make that business viable. Um, mm. So, you know, you get 50% off all TFC products by being a guide, uh, but by, by, being, by being a pro. Um, with no minimum order quantities so that you can make money from selling the tools. That's, that's one extra revenue stream. We're not saying that's going to mm. be able to support you, but it's, it's a bonus revenue stream on top of what you're able to learn by integrating the training into classes or you know, in-person events that you may want to run um, or good affiliate commission for referring people to those products without stocking them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the point being that for any thing to be sustainable, for any career to be sustainable, it does actually have to make you money. Uh, this is just how our economy works. It'd be cool if we could just do everything for free, but we, everyone has to live, everyone has to make money, um, and obviously providing a service, providing guidance can help make money, but having some products that you actually believe in and you've benefited from that other people try and want, then it makes sense for you to make some more money. And it mean, it literally means from, from a business point of view for us, we spend less on marketing, which is quite a big expense. 
which means you can take some of the profit there, basically. So it's, yeah. it's actually, you know, it's a win-win on both sides. And on the other side of that, the money we will spend on marketing and the energy we'll mm. put into organic promotion of the tools and the training through all of our social media platforms is marketing for whatever guides decide to do with the certification that they, they get access to. And exactly. Our customers are your customers, I suppose, and, and your potential clients. Our community is your community. Yeah. So while we don't want to... We definitely don't want to be saying like, oh, everyone has to get a soulmate in order to do this kind of training. The, soulmate, the training itself is the big thing, but the training tool is the best tool to facilitate the training. And so when people want the tool, you know, if you're helping them with it, then it makes sense for you to sell them the tool. So we, we definitely want to have a clear pathway on how the business aspect of this certification can integrate with your current business. Um, as part of the certification as well, you will get a, a guide training kit, um, which, or a guide starter kit rather, which is just a bunch of all of our tools that will help you explore them yourself um, and then eventually guide other people with them. So who's it for? We've already mentioned, I think it would be great for personal trainers, Pilates practitioners, yoga teachers, anyone who works with someone one-on-one -on -one with their movement, essentially a movement professional, um, or in groups, because this training is really great in groups, particularly great in groups. Um, but also very applicable to any health professionals, physios, chiros, osteos, podiatrists. Strength and conditioning coaches. Yeah. Exercise physiologists. Exercise physiologists, GPs even. Anyone who has an interest in this kind of approach and wants to be, wants to feel really confident and be a leader in it. Um, and that also goes for anyone who maybe isn't qualified, a qualified health and movement professional, but just wants to deepen their own practice, um, maybe help out family and friends if you can manage that, <laughs> um, or just, just have a, a deeper understanding and it is open to those people that are, but as we said before, it just doesn't provide any scope of practice to work with others. It's really just something that you can upskill from an academic and a practical point of view. Um, it'll give you awareness of your own restrictions and um, what you might be missing or something, things that you can improve, improve on. Um, it does obviously give you that connection to the community of people that we're building. Um, and it also for... For health and movement practitioners, we'll, it'll give you the ability to run TFC branded and sponsored events. Um, so that includes the Soulmate Sessions that we were talking about. If you have a facility, you can in integrate Soulmate Sessions as an offering as part of your, faci uh, part of your um, facility or studio. Uh, you could also just integrate some of the principles into your current offerings, current classes. It doesn't have to be a soulmate session. It could just be some aspects of soulmate training integrated into your current classes. And there are already you know, um, yeah. movement coaches who are doing that, Pilates mm -hmm. teachers and uh, Pilates instructors. And um, yeah, it's, it's not like the be all and end all that you now have to solely be a TFC yeah. guide and run TFC events. It's, it's something you can add in um, to what you're already offering. And, Give people something new, you know, expose people to, to a different type of experience. There's mm. still, there's a lot of uh, synergy between those, those movement practices, the mindful, Absolutely. Uh, slow paced, sort of lower impact training. Um, yeah. And fun. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a great way to warm up for a session. It's a great way to end a session. Um, so yeah, we're, we're by no means saying... TFC is the way and the only way and you must practice like this as soon as you're certified. It's really just another tool to add onto your belt and things that, something that you can integrate with what you're currently doing. And it does fit very well with pretty much anything to do with personal training, Pilates, yoga, physio, etc. Um, and it also does give you the, the opportunity to run um, workshops or play shops in your local area. And we will have a, a lot of online resources to help you make that happen if that is something that you're interested in. And support as well. So yeah. there'll be ongoing live calls each month for guides from around the world to connect so that you can hear how other people are running events and, and, and learn from that collective wisdom, but also have direct touch points with 
some of our guide managers and guide leaders around the world um, to help with the nuts and bolts of getting events like that running. And of course, as a certified TFC guide, TFC will help you promote those events through our website and social media to let our community know that your offering is out there mm. um, because that's really what, what, we, what we want the most. Um, every person who buys a Soulmate, we'd love to see them going to a class in their local community uh, and we'd love to see that class run by guides. Yeah, absolutely. So it's very, it's, there's a, there's a few moving parts there and, you know, if you're interested, obviously there's a landing page that you can go and um, look at all the details, read them all. Um, but it's very, very exciting for us because that is, at the end of the day, we want to uh, have these commu local communities of people moving and playing together and looking after their foot health together. And it is, we see it as, really the only way we can make a true shift in the culture, the, the true shift that really needs to happen. Um, so if you're listening and you've been excited by this concept, um, please reach out. Uh, we do have guide trainings, uh, guide certifications planned around various countries this year and there will be more next year as well. So 2024, um, in yep. case you're listening <laughs> yep. in the Good future. Call. So 2024, the first one will be in Brisbane here at our HQ. So if you're in Australia listening to this, um, hopefully you can make it to that one. And then that will be the only Australian one this year. And then we'll be also getting to the UK, Spain, and ideally the US later in the year as well. So head to the website to find out all the details for all of that. Um, and feel free to reach out if you've got any questions. And I mean, if you are keen, I guess get in get in early. True. Um, because you know, there's, there will be limited spots for these sessions, and we will, you know, as this project is getting off the ground, only be, only be able to run these certifications, at, at, you know, at a growing cadence as we get more trainers yeah. on board. But um, yeah, it, it may be the only one for for a while. For a while. Yeah. So uh, so get on what. On while you can yeah and otherwise thanks for listening and again highly recommend going back and listening to the um, truth fun community podcast about our values and also the TFC pro podcast because that can give you um, some good a good reference as to what kind of community you're joining with TFC pro by coming to a guide certification um, but yeah otherwise thanks for listening we'll catch you on the next episode cheers guys Thanks for tuning in to the Restore to Explore podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, we'd really appreciate you leaving a review wherever you're listening. That's the best way to support us and to help us reach more people. If you're after more free TFC education or training, looking for any of our TFC tools, natural footwear discounts, or you want specialized guidance on your foot health journey from a trusted TFC health professional, head to thefootcollective.com. All of the important links are in the show notes of the episode.